What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I wanna to show you another cool feature that was added with the motion design tools. And that's how we can actually have stuff auto size to any items that we have inside our viewport. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So with Emerald Engine 5.4 opened up, I'm in my motion design mode. I'm gonna come down here to create defaults and I'm just gonna add everything in here. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is double click on rectangle to bring my rectangle in here. And then down here at the bottom where it says align actors, I'm gonna left click on this and I'm gonna stretch it so it fills up the whole scene. And then I'm just gonna come over here to my details panel real quick, and I'm just gonna add some color to the background there. So simple style, instead of a solid, I'm gonna to go to gradient. Let's just make this blue, maybe something like that. Hit okay. And then I'm gonna to go to use unlit material, just like so. And I went through this on my last video, so if you want a slower breakdown, make sure you watch that. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create another rectangle in here. So I'm going to click this once and that's going to pop this in here. Maybe let's stretch this out a little bit. So going to select this side here, select this corner here, stretch it out a little bit. And I'm going to make this so it actually aligns with some text that I'm going to put in here. So let's just say we're going to change this color to maybe something different that will pop out. Maybe something around there. It doesn't have to be too pretty. We're not designing anything. Maybe that like that. And let's say we want to make this so we can use it as like a lower third or something like that. So I'm going to come down here into the bottom right to where it says global bevel size. I'm just going to scroll this up until we get something about there. Maybe let's go with 60. And then for subdivisions, come down here, maybe do 25. So it's a little bit more rounded there. And now let's make this into an outline so we can add text in the middle of it. So I'm gonna scroll this over a little bit cause I wanna come over here, the operator stack. And if you don't see it right here, if you look over in the top left hand corner, you should see operator stack right there. So if I click on this, now we can add modifiers and we can make this into an outline. So if I add modifier here, if I come down here to geometry, we have this outline modifier here. So if I left click on this, now you can see it turned a rectangle into an outline. So you can actually control it with this distance here, make it smaller or larger. I'm just gonna leave it at default at 10. And now let's add some text that we can put into the middle of this. So if I come over here to actors on our left-hand side, left click here, come over here to text actor. And with this selected, I'm gonna come over to my motion outliner so I can see it being added. So I'm gonna left click on this. There we go. Now we have some text in here. We're not seeing it because we have to add a font. So over here, instead of my details panel, I'm gonna come right here to where it says motion design font. Left click on this. Let's just go with something. We'll go with bangers again. And then we're gonna make a text. We'll just name this one Pittsburgh or we'll type in Pittsburgh because that's where I'm from. There we go. We have Pittsburgh there. I'm gonna align it to the center, which is gonna be right here. Align it to center. And maybe let's turn this out a little bit. Just a tad bit, something like that. Maybe let's bring it up to eight. And then if we wanna make this a little bit larger, I'm gonna come over here to scale, just scale this up a tad bit, maybe like 1.5 or maybe even two, somewhere around there. Now let's say we're working on like a lower third graphic or something for a TV show, and we want this to encompass our text right here. And so what we would do is actually with my rectangle selected right here, I'm gonna come back to my operator stack and right here under modifier, I'm gonna left click on this and right here under layout, we have auto size. Now, if I left click on this, this is gonna bring up this attribute box for auto size down here. And right here where it says reference actor, there's two ways that we can select this. So if I select this right here, you can look for the text down in here, which is right there, cause that's what I want it to reference. Or if you come over here, we have this picker right here. If you left click on this and then click on your text, you can see that it automatically aligned with our text there. And if we wanted to pad it out a little bit, right here where it says padding, we can actually pad this out, maybe let's say like 10. So we add a little bit of room in there, even maybe go up to 12, something like that. Now, no matter what I do to the text, this is actually gonna go along with it. So let me show you an example. So if I come over, select my text, and let's change out the text. Maybe let's go Pittsburgh Steelers. Now you can see that it actually stretched out with it. So if I just do maybe like Pittsburgh PGH, something like that. Now you can see what I'm talking about. So no matter what size we make this text, this is actually gonna be the same size, which works a lot for broadcast graphics, sports graphics, things of that nature. You can see where this is becoming really powerful. Even if I come down here and I scale it up, you can see that it's actually going with the scaling of my text there, which I always thought was pretty neat. And then what's also neat is if I come back over here, the operator stack, so I have my text selected, 
I'm going to come to operator stack. I'm going to come to animators. And if I add just the animator, let's come down maybe to like bounce, something like that. If I click on scale, you can see that it's actually going with the bounce of the text. So no matter what I do to the text here, it's automatically going to align with my text there, which I thought was really neat. So if you're just adding random modifiers in here, maybe let's do like rotation. You can see that it's aligning up with our text there. So no matter what we do to our text, this is automatically going to align with it. Now, let's say you are working with a broadcast network or you're working on a sporting event or a TV show and you need to send this over to the network so they can work with this live while on air. You can actually use the remote down there so you can set up a toolkit and send that over to them and they won't miss it up. So if you want to set that up, what you're going to do is come over here to where you have your text selected. Let's move this over like so. Let's actually do it down here for text. So I'm going to select this right here. And you can see down here in my remote control, it actually added it down here. Now, this is really helpful if you have like an artist that doesn't know Unreal and you need to send it to that client and you want to make this as foolproof as possible. You can actually set everything up down the remote control here and they could just go in and just type in, you know, the next text. So let's say Atlanta, something like that. So there you go. Oh, actually, I spelled Atlanta wrong, but if you can see what I'm going for. So if you come in here and they could just type it out down here. Let's just type in Denver. Boom, just like that. And so it makes it really easy for whoever's on the other end to just go in and type this out. They don't have to miss with anything else in here. You can set up auto parameters that you want in the remote control in which that's another tutorial. So I'll go deeper into that, but I just want to show you that just in case you want to play around with it. So let's say that you're happy with how your text is. You have your lower third all designed out, but you want to set up some parameters so that the client on the other end can't really screw it up once you send it over to them. So you can not set those up if you come over here inside of your text file. So make sure I have my text selected. And then if I come over here and I come down to where we have layout, you have your max width and your max height. So if you want to set it up, you can actually select these like that. And then let's say you want your max width to be around 350. So no matter what type you type in, so let's go back to Pittsburgh down here, something like that. Then let me select this right here. And this is going to be our max width. So if I start scrolling this in, you can see that it's squishing it around. So if I come back over here and I type in Denver, you can see how it doesn't go past that. But let's just type in a bunch of letters something like that you can see how it's starting to squish and that's because we set it to be within these parameters and you could do the same thing with height too and then if you want to do it manually inside the viewport you just select this yellow arrow right here and you can see that it's actually changing it with the max width so let's say that you have to work within title safe like that you do have some leeway there so let's just go back type in a few letters so you can see how it's larger here but if they type in a lot of letters you can see how it's starting to squish it out and that's so you don't go past your title safe there whenever you're working in broadcast so this is really important if you're working in broadcast you don't want stuff to go off screen you do have some leeway there where it's going to squish it a little bit there but you know you just work within your parameters now for motion graphics artists i find this to be really helpful so let me show you like a real world experience where i think this could really be suffice so a couple of years ago on the history channel i worked on this tv show i had to do a whole plethora of lower thirds for it and what you can see right here this is just an example and so we have the footage here we have the lower third that i designed out and for every character inside the tv show i had to create a lower third and it got to the point to where you know the episodes were coming in really fast hot on the deadlines so the editors just wanted some templates to work with in which we have the short version right here and then we have the long version right here so no matter how long the name is they at least had two different sizes to work with but you can see with unreal and they would just be able to type this out and it will automatically size up with the text which would have been really helpful when i was working on this tv show so hopefully you guys and ladies out there are excited about this new tool set i can see where this is going to be really powerful especially for broadcast designers or people that work on tv shows like myself like i showed you i do a lot of lower third works when working on these tv shows so this is going to become really handy whenever i'm working on my projects so again make sure you keep it unlocked here on my youtube channel hit that subscribe button as i'm going to be doing a lot more motion tutorials so till next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you in the next video i see you soon take care